Tallahassee 31 News Tonight. I'm Scott Beadle. The worst is behind us as Harvey heads to the north and east. Meteorologist Kim Walker joins us off the top with better news for our holiday weekend. Well, Harvey does, uh, it is starting to move to the northeast right now. It's in the southeastern corner of Arkansas, northern Mississippi area, but still seeing uh, some bands of rain wrapping around this low pressure system. It is a depression right now, uh, but it is wrapping around, so there could be a few light showers that will move across our area, but otherwise it's going to be dry out there. Temperatures by tomorrow will start off in the 60s. We are going to see a lot of clouds, staying cloudy through your noon hour with temperature readings around 70. Nine degrees. We climb up to around 86 degrees, which is almost 10 degrees warmer than today. And then by 5 o'clock, expect mostly sunny conditions. So we'll finally see the, the sunshine and temperatures will drop down to around 84 degrees. We do have more rain chances in your seven day forecast. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. All right. Thank you, Kim. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards paid a visit to the mega shelter in Alexandria that's currently housing Hurricane Harvey evacuees. Every single person here, very appreciative for uh, the efforts that's been made to move them out of uh, southeast Texas and, and into an, a shelter where all of their needs are being taken care of. And so we're, we're happy that we're able to do it. And Alexandria is welcoming victims of Hurricane Harvey. ABC 31's Joanna Phillips has the story. Hurricane Harvey, now Tropical Storm Harvey, has led Texas residents to Louisiana. Yesterday evening, the LSU Ag Center Mega Shelter here in Alexandria opened its doors to evacuees. The shelter is staffed by the Louisiana Department of Children and Family Services, who set up about 2,000 cots last Friday evening to be prepared for the possibility of having to open the shelter's doors. What we're doing is just putting together and making sure that the evacuees of Texas and some from Louisiana, ensuring that they have the quality of life and putting together anything that's going to satisfy, uh, whether that be just a warm bed that they have to lay down, blanket, uh, food, clothing, shelter. Some evacuees experienced more devastation and loss than others. Regardless, Hurricane Harvey has made an impact on thousands. It's kind of heartbreaking to me, you know, because a lot of people have to start all over. And it just, you know, just to see people go through things like that, you know, the tears and emotion, you know, and it's, it's just hard. One family opened up to us about their experience. Although one member declined to speak on camera, she shared videos with us of water rising around her home. At noon today, the mega shelter was estimated to be housing over 600 Texas survivors. Joanna Phillips, ABC 31 News. The Red Cross invited residents out to a four hour shelter training class this afternoon to prepare to help out with those evacuees. 13 volunteers learned the fundamentals of running a shelter. They received guidelines concerning disaster cycle services. The training classes are for those wanting to volunteer or work as disaster responders external community and government partners. That class may be offered again based on the number of volunteers who are interested. The Louisiana National Guard is working with the U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Marine Reserves, Louisiana State Police, and the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries to rescue Texas citizens. At the direction of the Governor's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness, the National Guard has partnered with these other agencies to spread their rescue efforts through water, land, and air. Along with rescues, the National Guard has issued over 1,000 MREs, about 3,000 water bottles, and about 415,000 sandbags. As Harvey slowly comes to an end, evacuees are back on the road. We caught up with State Trooper Scott Moreau to get a few travel safety tips. With the additional rain that's coming in, we're going to have more people also coming in from Texas and South Louisiana. So what that will do is increase the traffic volume. Um, First of all, you need to uh, make sure you slow your speed in the rain or in heavy traffic volume. That's a cause of a lot of crashes is excessive speed. When you hear people say that they are uh, they hydroplaned and ran off the road, it wasn't because it just happened. No, it was because they're going too fast. So they need to slow down maybe 10 or 15 miles an hour less than the speed limit, depending on how hard it's raining or how much uh, water is on the road. One thing you want to avoid is going around barricades. First of all, it's illegal to go around a barricaded road that says high water, uh, but more importantly is for your safety. Uh. And for more tips on how to travel safely in bad weather, you can visit weatherchannel.com and type extreme weather driving safety tips in the search bar. 
High water on the red is temporarily causing the closure of area boat launches. These include ramps operated by the Red River Waterway Commission in Rapids, Natchitoches, Grant, and Boyles. However, please note that the river is not closed to boat traffic. Harvey's now blamed for at least 31 fatalities. The storm may have destroyed up to 100,000 homes, and relief efforts are in full gear. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is in Houston with the latest. Rescuers dropping down and floating in, saving Texans still stranded, surrounded by water that in parts of the Beaumont area keeps rising. The devastation there knocking out the local clean water supply, forcing one hospital to evacuate nearly 200 patients today. We never expected to lose our water supply. In Port Arthur, the mayor from inside his own flooded home reassuring residents. I know one thing though, it's not gonna defeat us. If you call 911 and we haven't gotten there yet, we are on the way. In Crosby, Texas, officials now downplaying the concerns after fire erupted at this chemical plant. Exposure to smoke from these organic peroxides is similar to standing over a burning campfire. About 30 miles away in Houston, the water finally receding. Look at the high water mark. Rescuers here in Harris County searching the more than 1,700 square miles that flooded. We're going by each house, checking door to door. An up close look at the damage as officials estimate at least 40,000 homes in this county alone are destroyed. But 100,000 is certainly not out of the question. Today, Vice President Mike Pence touring the destruction where Harvey first hit in Rockport as help comes in from across the country for the tens of thousands of Texans now living in shelters and those still trying to make it to dry ground. It didn't matter what race, religion we was, we all come together in unity to make sure these people are safe. Safe, but now wondering what's next. Most of the people impacted do not have flood insurance. FEMA says they're getting people registered for federal assistance as quickly as possible and now working to figure out their next steps for housing. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Houston. Donations are being accepted for Harvey evacuees housed at the mega shelter. Requested items include diapers, jeans, t-shirts, socks, shoes and undergarments for all ages and sizes. Also, infant onesies and baby blankets are needed. All clothing must be new, wrapped, or packaged. The drop-off location is the Crest Theater in downtown Alexandria at 1090 Third Street. Well, Harvey is upsetting the best laid plans of central Louisiana residents, so we do invite you to go to our website or to our Facebook page to keep up with the different closures, rescheduled events, and other important information. We will add these notices as they become available. A contempt hearing is set for September 8th in the case of Norris Greenhouse Jr., former marshal accused of murdering a child in Marksville and wounding his father. According to the Avoyles Journal, Greenhouse was on a vacation out of the country going to the Caribbean. The hearing next week will be to determine if he is in contempt of court for making that trip. He had provided the court with a million dollar property bond and agreed to wear an ankle bracelet. He is due to be tried in October for the shooting of Christopher Few and injuries to his father almost two years ago after a chase in Marksville, which other law enforcement officers said was not necessary. Voiles Parish is open for business, especially the tourism industry. Here's an overview of what's happening during the first week of September, starting on Labor Day weekend at the Paragon Casino Resort. We have the Molly Ring Walls on September 1st, which is Friday. We have uh, Stevie B on September 2nd on Saturday. And then we round it out with Neil McCoy on September 3rd. So as I said, three nights of Labor Day, three concerts. A wonderful opportunity to be at Paragon and in a Vols Parish. Natchitoches police say a tow truck driver helped them box in a hit and run driver. He was then arrested after a high speed chase. 34-year-old Ashley Descant of Evergreen in Avoyles Parish is facing charges of hit and run, DWI, and hazardous driving. They're in connection with two incidents on Kaiser Avenue and on South Drive. Police say she was finally stopped near Westside Baptist Church. Natchitoches police need your help in locating a man wanted for burglary and battery. He's 31-year-old Antoine Mitchell of Natchitoches. Police say he entered a home, used a gun to demand drugs, and then beat the victim, taking his prescription pills and cell phone. If you can help out, please call Natchitoches Police. The Park England Hotel is reopened and slated for auction. The upscale boutique hotel at England Air Park is now owned by BOM, the mortgage holder, which obtained ownership after the facility went bankrupt. Details for the 48-room hotel are still being finalized, 
but BOM officials say it's been through an upgrade, which includes infrastructure and new interior designs. You can go to parkengland.com for more information. We'll be back right after this. Florida State versus Alabama, Saturday at 7 on KLAX TV. Brought to you locally by Cal's Air Conditioning and Electrical. Welcome back, everyone. This is what it looked like earlier today. It was a dreary day with lots of clouds in our sky and maybe just a few showers out there. But Harvey continues to move away from our area, taking most of the rain away with it. And so there is just a smattering of a few light showers across the area. But most of the heavy rain is well to our northeast, along with Harvey that's moving away. But you can see some bands of showers that are uh, moving into our area, but they are very light. And and we are going to see a little bit of a dry up uh, as we head into tomorrow. So here's a look at your future radar for this evening. We are expecting maybe not, not much going on, just a few showers that will be moving across the area. But otherwise, I think most things uh, or the the precipitation will start to dry out as we make our way toward the midnight hour. And then tomorrow, drier air will start to move away. So here's Harvey right now moving toward the northern portions of Mississippi. It will continue to move away from our area and that will translate to a much drier day. It will be mild out there. Temperatures will be a little bit warmer than today, but it's still gonna be uh, mild compared to what our normal temperatures are around this time of year. But uh, look at this dry weather for a change, so we are going to definitely welcome it tomorrow. Right now, though, 79, or 76 degrees in Alexandria, uh, 85 degrees just a little bit to our north, Lake Charles, 81 degrees, so temperatures mainly in the 70s and 80s, depending where the clouds were and depending where the precipitation was. So temperatures overall were a lot warmer than today, about three degree difference over Alexandria. Here's what uh, you can expect as we head into the next few days. Tomorrow, we're going to start off with clouds, but then mostly sunny through the afternoon, mild temperatures, staying rain free through the end of the weekend, but then clouds will start to increase on Labor Day and we could have a few isolated thunderstorms as well. Your forecast for tonight calls for temperatures dipping down into the upper 60s with cloud cover. There could be an isolated shower or two, but that's pretty much it. Tomorrow highs will be around 86 degrees, so nearly 10 degrees warmer than today, but still below normal. Lots of sunshine for the end of the day, but uh, again, temperatures remaining pretty mild. We're going to stay in the 80s over the weekend, but we're going to see a lot more sunshine. But then here comes Monday on your Labor Day. It looks like there's a chance for an isolated thunderstorm or two in the afternoon. Highs will be around 87 degrees, and then we have another system coming through for the middle part of the week. That will knock temperatures down, especially because we do have chances of thunderstorms both Tuesday and also on Wednesday. On Thursday, we will see a little bit more sunshine, and highs will be around 85 degrees. Scott? All right. Thank you, Kim. Some states require the kids entering the 7th and 12th grades get a meningitis vaccine, but that vaccine may not be enough to fully protect your child from infection. Jennifer Lukey has the story. Kim was a very kind person, very compassionate, very, very silly. She was the most wonderful daughter. Kimberly Coffey was a senior in high school when she came home with a slight fever and body aches. Her mom, Patty, thought Kim might have the flu. She had three tiny purple dots on one of her ankles, and I'm a registered nurse, and I knew that something was going on with her blood. So Patty rushed Kim to the hospital. When I got her into the emergency room, the doctors told me they suspected Kimberly had bacterial meningitis, and I told them that's not possible. My daughter's been vaccinated. But it was possible because the vaccine Kim had, which is what most teenagers get, only covers four strains of meningitis. It doesn't protect against meningitis B, and that is what ended up taking Kim's life. We actually buried Kimberly in her prom dress that she didn't get to wear at her senior prom just two days before high school graduation. When Kim died, there was no vaccine for meningitis B. Now there is, but it's a separate shot for teenagers, one that parents have to specifically ask for. The organism itself is unique in some ways, which is why it has its own vaccine. But the disease caused by all of the 
meningitis types, that disease is really very similar. In fact, nearly half of all meningitis cases are type B, but because the vaccine is relatively new, it's not yet mandatory. Over time, we'll uh, gain a, a sort of a stronger recognition and become a part of the regular vaccine recommendations for young people. But for right now, parents have to take the lead. Patty has made it her mission to reach as many parents as possible. It has helped me with my grieving process. It has helped me turn something horrific into something positive where I can hopefully help people. Coming up, NSU football coach Jay Thomas talks about the rivalry matchup coming up against LaTeX. Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> oh, I can't get enough of this video. Right this minute is TV's number one daily viral video show. Right this minute. Coming this fall on KLAX TV. Ladies and gentlemen, college football season is finally returned. Tonight, a pair of top 10 ranked teams hit the field, and then in just two days, Northwestern State will head to Ruston to take on La Tech. It's an in-state rivalry that's been budding for years and will be quite the opening week challenge for the Demons. It's a big challenge for us. Uh, you know, Tech has been very successful for many years. Um, I have a good football team coming back this year. Uh, had a big bowl um, game last year that they played really well in. Coach Host has done a fantastic job there. So we do, obviously, we got, our, we got our hands full going. It is an opening game for both schools. Now, the NSU soccer team will return to action tomorrow. They'll prepare to take on Texas State. Lady Demons need to try to piece together its strong defense with its up-and-coming offense if it wants a chance to succeed this season. And Coach Van Linder hopes it'll happen tomorrow against a tough opponent. Texas State, really a well-coached program. She's, uh, the head coach has been there forever, and uh, they always have good teams, and that's always such a close rivalry. So um, it's going to be just important for us to kind of build on what we've done here and just kind of continue to focus on our uh, attack and what we're trying to do. And then hopefully uh, the weather plays out for us, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll go well with that. So uh, Texas State will be a uh, tough challenge, but hopefully we can get on the right side of the scoreboard with them. Thanks for watching ABC 31 News. Have a great night. When a case seems unsolvable, they see the incredible murder, motive, secrets, Bones Weekends. Watch Bones Weekends on KLAX ABC 31. Stay connected with KLAX ABC 31. Visit us online anytime. Get today's top stories and trending topics. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. See our pics on Instagram. Watch us on YouTube. And make KLAXTV.com your home for local news and information. Plus, download the KLAX weather app for your smartphone or tablet. Get live current conditions, radar maps, alerts, and more. More ways to stay connected with KLAX TV.